what's the mood of the guys going into this last game with playoff spot practically secured, but a home playoff spot still available? Just like that, just like that. Like uh, good mood overall. Good mood today was an uh, energetic and fun session, but at the same time, the, the players know uh, tomorrow is going to be business. And first of all, we have to respect Cincinnati because many comments about this game is going to be an easy one and you know the, the, their position in the standings, the last few results. But it's a new coach that with players that are fighting for contracts for next year. They're going to be at home last game, so it won't be easy at all. And we need to make sure that we're on the front foot. But having in our minds, yes, we want to try to push for that home playoff game. And uh, that's the mentality of the team. That's what they have in their minds, but respecting a lot uh, Cincinnati. So Sosa uh, training by himself, I, I think. Is he unavailable or available for selection for something? Yeah, he, he won't be available he won't be, okay. uh, at the moment. Uh, we, we tried. We tried to push, but uh, it's probably safer not to push that hard at this moment of the season. Uh, but uh, yeah, he's going to travel with the team, he's going to be around, uh, and hopefully next week he, he can retire. What you mentioned, even in your in introductory press conference, remember we talked about intensity, how that's something that you always want from this team. You've s spoken about the mentality of the team a lot lately. When this team has a goal, you know, now, it's, now the goal is to secure perhaps a home playoff spot. How do you think this team has reacted to those sort of moments throughout the season where there's an objective that they can touch almost. Well, since I am here, I, I would say that pretty positive. Obviously, with ups and downs and certain games where we were not good enough, Philadelphia, probably the last one against New York Red Bulls. Uh, in terms of performance, then the results can be different, but uh, the, the application of the players has been very good since I am here. So I have no fears on that. I think they know tomorrow is going to be business and, and we have to go there and play on the front foot, being aggressive uh, on the ball, being aggressive off the ball, and come back to the style that we've been playing most of the games. So I, I feel that the mentality in those moments is good overall. What have been your takeaways after now reviewing the Red Bull match? Well, it was, uh, it was very challenging to put some <laughs> clips together uh, because of the particular style that they have. Uh, but it's something that we have to learn from it. I learned from it. I told them that I take some responsibility because I didn't know uh, how effective that style can be in their stadium. Uh, so I will take a lot of responsibility there. Maybe I need to do something extra with them, some better preparation. And next time I will be, pro uh, I will try to be more prepared, uh, and I will remember this game. Now I think the the most common. Uh, patterns of play ag playing against us, the, the, the most similar way that other teams are going to play against us, we, we can handle those. And I feel like the team is confident on the abilities they have. And uh, hopefully tomorrow we can have a good performance, more than anything, a good performance, solid performance where the players feel confident and they feel those connections and they can find gaps and they can find some rhythm in the ball, good defensively. Uh, so, so that's the objective. But talking about uh, uh, Red Bulls, I would like to give a big shout to, to the defensive line because we don't talk a lot about that. We talk about, yes, we were not good in possession and stuff, but the amount of pressure that they were, they were able to resist and never giving up and being tough defenders inside the box, especially with a lot of process, a lot of set pieces, I think the back line, the goalkeepers, and for meets, and even the forwards at times when they have to drop back a little bit and fight for those balls, challenging second half, there's an action where Luis uh, sprints back to block a pass, just a simple pass, and he sprints back to do it. Marco did it at times, like, you saw the intensity they played, that's the type of intensity they want in those type of games. When, when did you decide, or when was it collectively decided perhaps in that game that, hey, we can't play cleanly out of the back right now, we, perhaps we do need to play long and play second balls? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't the game plan at all. Uh, it was part of the game plan, yes, maybe to the first few actions, try to play more direct, uh, but more balls in behind the back line, trying to attract in them and then play in behind. But we were not able to do it. And that's where I give credit to the team, that they were able to adapt to the situation. And sometimes when you see that you can win the game, you don't lose. And, and 
they kind of understood that over maybe the second half, they were able to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And even there, we had probably two chances. Yeah. Stan says one with a shot from Bello, but the cross from Brooks in the second half was also very dangerous. Yeah. And I think uh, we still, we were still solid in the back, not, not giving up a lot of chances, clear chances for them. So I felt the team adapt, and that's something that I want. I won't be there every second of the game telling them what to do. And I want players that are able to adapt to different situations and just persevere and find a way to win or not to lose. I was going to ask you with Seattle, how many times did y'all ever go play Red Bulls at Red Bulls? Not hmm. many times. I mean, as a coach, I don't think I did. Okay. In, in New York, I think I did it as a player. Uh -huh. I played against Jerry and Bree and we lost, but they were not playing the same style. Right. Uh, so uh, when you know, the rest of the coaching staff that they know better near Red Bulls in that environment. They told me about it and I was, yeah, I mean, I get it, but, you know, I've been facing teams with similar <laughs> approach and, you know, we've been able to, to, to do well. And now I understand what type of game is playing Red Bulls there. And again, I take responsibility for that uh, because I, I, I get the warnings from my assistants, and I thought that, that we can actually play, go there and try to play good football and try to play up in the back and try to do what we've been doing. But honestly, great to Red Bulls. They did their style very, very good, and they have a very specific way to play, and I respect every style of play, and I respect Red Bulls, and they were a very difficult opponent that, you know, is, is going to help us to just improve in those scenarios. Miles is going off uh, to the national team. Um, so assuming that y'all are in the playoffs, how will not having him affect your ability to work again if you wanted to switch to a back four or just work on different formations? Well, I think we, we've we been doing that a uh, few weeks ago. Uh, uh, we trained the back four, so I have no issues with that. Obviously, it's not ideal to interrupt the preparation, but I think those issues uh, will be for most of the teams in playoffs because most of the teams in playoffs have good players and international players. So no complaints. It is what it is and I will try to pre prepare the team at the best of our abilities. And sometimes, yes, it's tactics, but in playoffs, I think it's more about the mentality. We talk about that uh, many times, uh, but it is real. It's in playoffs, yes, the tactics, the quality of the players is very important. But the mentality of how you prepare your team to be on the front foot, to be strong in tough moments, because playoffs is not easy. And there are moments where you're going to be under pressure and they need to hold that pressure and being able to, to remain uh, focused on the game and the game plan. So the mentality of the team is going to be my biggest concern in those two, two weeks. So I think Miles is going to be okay, reintegrating after the, the national team. And, uh, and that's it. Understanding you can't go into details, but have you and Carlos started talking about the roster, looking into the off season and things like that? Uh, not, not really. Obviously, okay. a few things, but not really in detail because I've been trying to neglect a little bit those conversations. To be honest, <laughs> uh, I want my focus to be in this team uh, and this team only, uh, and there will be enough time in the off season. Hopefully, not that much because we are in December. <laughs> Uh, the 15 and we are after a parade or something but uh, <laughs> but uh, there will be time to talk about that they have a job to do which is scouting players and signing players they have a job to do which is coaching the players that they put in front of me I have to say publicly that I'm very happy with the roster I have mm -hmm. now so it's nothing like I complain about anything I, I think I have a lot of quality players in key positions and that's all I can ask Anything else? Go ahead. I got one the last one. Yeah, Marcelo or Marcelino, Barco, Luis. Like I know you've wanted them to stay better connected, to, to, to play together, to, to read the game, to find that awareness. It, it hasn't always happened. I think Red Bull is in a different sort of context. But what what do they need to do as a group, and perhaps even as individuals, to to just raise their level and, and be a little bit more effective? Yeah, that's always a challenge. I, I would agree with you that in certain parts of the of the games, sometimes they don't look uh, sharp on the ball, or they are missing passes. Or, but but it takes time uh, to to get there. Uh, for me, it's just continue the work, uh, uh, the tactical work with them, 
the visuals, the film, so they understand the movements and the qualities of their teammates. And that takes time. So yeah. It doesn't happen, you know, immediately. So it's going to take a time until you know Luis integrates fully into the movements of Joseph and understands uh, the movements of Marco and then Marcelino coming from the second line and sprinting behind. So it takes time. But I think it's getting better. So that's what I feel like uh, they are getting better. They are knowing each other better. And hopefully in play, if they can get in a very good level where they can uh, be effective, as you said, I like that word. Yeah. Because sometimes it, it's different to be dangerous and, and, and a big difference is to be effective. And uh, uh, I think they are effective, but they can be even better for sure. Hopefully they can, we can prepare them to get there in the playoffs. And then Joseph, how is Joseph looking for, for this game tomorrow? And are you thinking about already just a similar plan to how you've managed him for once you're in the playoffs? Or what's, what's the story with Joseph as far as how, how far you push him the, the next few weeks? Well, uh, I think uh, Joseph is good physically. He's good to go. He's prepared. You saw last game, he helped the team with shielding the ball and fighting for the aerial duels. And he was able to do uh, some movements that help us to have a little bit more possession higher on the field. So actually the chances that we had on the game were when Joseph was on the field. And that was a little bit tactical and a little bit of, you know, the awareness of the defenders have on Joseph. So it is, uh, it is very important that Joseph is fit and he is ready to go. And I think he's now, so now the plan with him is being gradually to push him a little bit higher the next week especially. So he can be fresh, but he can be fit for 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 finals that hopefully yeah. we we can have. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. Thanks, Josh. Thank, Thank you. you.